So you can see, we snapped the picture. Uh, we're currently translating and beautiful. We have displayed the text and given Jack a voice. Hi everybody, my name is Ford Downer. I am a support engineer here at Roboflow. And today we're gonna learn how to give your dog a voice using visual AI. So let's introduce ourselves to the actors today. First up, we have Jack. Jack is our friendly local neighborhood Jack Russell Terrier. Now, many times I look at Jack and I think to myself, man, I would love to know what he would say right now. Well, thanks to visual AI, we're gonna be able to give Jack a voice. I also want to introduce you to Steve, Steve the squirrel. Now it's important to note that no squirrels were harmed in the making of this demo. So now we can see that we have Steve in the tree and Jack down on the ground. And man, I would love to know what he's thinking right now. Well, with the help of our object detection model trained within RoboFlow, we can see that we have a dog and we have a squirrel. Well, and now thanks to our key point detection model, again, trained within RoboFlow, we can estimate the orientation of both Jack's ears and of his tail, as you can see delineated by the red points down in the bottom left-hand corner. So let's put all four of those variables together. We know we have a squirrel, we know we have a dog, thanks to our object detection model, and using our detected key points on Jack, we're able to determine the orientation of both his tails and his ears. So with a little bit of custom back-end logic, we're able to match those variables to this text string here and actually give Jack a voice. Now the question is, how exactly did we do this? Well, as I said, we took both an RF debtor object detection model and a key point detection model, again, both trained within the RoboFlow platform, married them up in a RoboFlow workflow to actually give Jack his voice. So before we dive into it, quick note here, this is just an MVP, not a fully flushed out application. So I just wanna keep that in mind as we're going throughout our models that we have here. So let's talk first about how to build an object detection model. So we're gonna start off here on our annotation flow. You can see I've already uploaded this image here in the name of time for our live demo today. Now, before we go any further, I wanna mention the two golden rules of computer vision. One, your training data should look like your production data. And we can see we're following that rule here. We have a dog and we have a squirrel. So we're gonna be adding this to our training set and it has the exact same characteristics that we expect to see in our production data. Additionally, we'll look into this a little bit later on, but we want to label images exactly how we want the model to perform. So we're gonna X out of this, assign to label ourselves, and now we're just gonna start the object detection labeling process. So as you can see when we're labeling here, we want to keep it nice and tight to the dog and beautiful. We see we already have the dog class selected. And now we can move on to the squirrel. So we're gonna want to outline the squirrel, being careful to keep it tight, but include the entire squirrel. Now you'll notice it's actually selecting the dog right now. So quick hack, all you have to do is use your down arrow on your keypad to actually select the squirrel class, hit enter, and beautiful. We now have a squirrel annotation. So we're gonna click out of here, submit these for review. We can now see that we're within the review tab here. We're gonna go in here, look at our annotations. Looks great to me. All right, let's approve them. Now we're gonna go out. Beautiful, we can see that they are now approved. We'll add those approved to our data set. So you can see it's now within the data set tab. And we're gonna click generate a new version. So you can select your different desired pre-processing steps. Uh, important note here, you'll notice that these dogs, human and search classes. So this was just some classes I was experimenting with when actually assembling this data set. Don't wanna include that in our data set version I actually train on, so we can exclude those. Uh, we're gonna hit continue, add any desired augmentations you want and then hit create, which will create a data set version that we can then use to actually train or improve upon an existing model. Um, and in the name of time, we're not actually gonna do that in this webinar. We're going to move into our key point detection model here. So when we first start off with our key point detection model, we define these key point skeletons. So basically the way to think about this is just a starter template to help us speed up our annotation process. So you can see this will be for the dog's tail. We have the tip, mid, and base. So let's move into our actual key point annotation flow here. Again, you can see I've already taken the time to upload an image 
And we have this certified good boy right here, nice golden retriever that we're going to annotate on. So we're going to label myself, go in here, and let's start with his ears. So we're going to put this skeleton over top of it. You can see we're currently at the tail, but we're doing the ears. So we just click on it. We have now switched ourselves to the ear key point skeleton, and this is the ear tip. So we're just gonna drag that down there to the bottom. Looks good to me. Uh, the ear base, I've defined this, if you're familiar with dog anatomy, is the base of the dog's ear right here. And then the midpoint will be right here on the dog ear. Now in the interest of time, we're not gonna annotate the other um, ear, but we will annotate the tail. All right, so we're just going to select that. And again, we're on the ear, so we're just gonna switch over to the tail skeleton. So we can see the base of the tail, and as I've defined this in my data set, um, just the way I've approached annotating, it'll be the base of the tail at the middle of the dog's tail. And then the tip, um, I'm gonna estimate that it's right here, given my prior knowledge of golden retrievers and golden doodles. And then we can see the midpoint right there. All right, beautiful. We have now saved our annotations. We're going to submit these for review. We can now see that it is within this. So we can go in here, look at our annotations. Here we have the ear, here we have the tail. Looks good to me, let's approve them. We're gonna fix it out of here. All right, it's now populated as approved. Oops, we can add approved to the data sets. Beautiful. So now we're just gonna go through the exact same flow, add these to our data set version, um, add any pre-processing or augmentation steps you would like, and again, create the data set version to actually train our model on. Again, due to the interest of time, we're not gonna actually be training a model in this webinar. So I have taken the liberty of going ahead and already training both our object detection and key point detection models here. And here's a little bit of where we're gonna work towards within the workflow. So this is RoboFlow workflows, where we're actually implementing the models themselves and doing a little bit of work with them to de achieve our desired output. So like I said, this will be our label visualization output and our key, key point visualization output. So again, you can see what the model is doing here. This is just to aid in visual debugging. So now that we know where we're working towards, let's actually dive into the various blocks themselves. So first up, we have the input block. So as you can see here, this is just where we input our test image, which as you can see, here's Jack, here's the squirrel. Beautiful, seen this one before. Now here we have our object detection model. So you can see there's many different properties that we can actually specify within the workflow. For example, a confidence threshold, we can filter out classes if we'd like. So if we only want to include dogs, perfect, just type in dogs. Um, several different variables that we can adjust here as well, such as IOU threshold, max detections, and many more. Um, let's move into the key point detection model. Same idea here. Um, again, many different properties that we can actually adjust and fine tune. Again, the class filter, that's great for experimenting with different classes and so on and so forth. Um, now, a very helpful block that I wanna note down here is the RoboFlow dataset upload. So what this block allows you to do is actually upload the inputted image from our input block right here with the annotations applied by this object detection model block right here. And this will upload to our target project right here as an image that we can now add to our data set to help further iterate and improve upon our models. So we can adjust the annotations applied by the model and continue to just iterate and fine tune. Uh, it's a wonderful block to help improve and iterate upon your models. So again, the exact same uh, block here for our key point detection model. So basically you just change the target project. So this is the identification of our key point detection project. Um, now down here to help us with um, visual debugging, we have these bounding box visualizations. So what we have right here, again, is some parameters that you can fine tune, such as the color palette, color axis, thickness, roundness, many different variables that you can actually change here. Um, again, same with the key point visualization. And then we also have our label visualization block here. So what this allows us to do is actually see the object detections, as you can see inputted here. And here again, 
is the actual numeric. So we can see we have the squirrel and the dog. And if we test this block, we get this. Beautiful. All right. So we can see we have a dog visualization here and a squirrel detection here. So again, this is just another great tool for visual debugging. So putting this all together, we can actually test our workflow. So again, here's our demo image. We have Jack and we have Steve the squirrel. And then here are the outputs we get. So here's our label visualization from the object detection model. So we can see we detected a dog and a squirrel. And the key point. So we can see we detected the key points on the ears and also on the tail. And then furthermore, uh, this is just so we can visualize it. We can see we have the object detection predictions specifically for the dog and for the squirrel. We have the confidence levels and many other different values. Now moving down here, we can see the key point detection predictions, same exact thing. So we have the ears class and then these are the specific points. So we have the mid, tip, and base, just like we saw when we were annotating the images themselves. All right, so now that we understand how that all works, let's slide through these and bring it all together. So as you can see on the left-hand side here, we start with the output of our object detection model. Then add this in with our key point detection model. And with the help of some custom backend logic, we're actually able to match all these different variables to a text string and give Jack a voice. So let's do a quick demo of the app itself. So you can see we snap the picture. Uh, we're currently translating and beautiful. We have displayed the text and given Jack a voice. Now, there's many other different applications of this object detection and key point detection technology. Uh, this one in particular in the transportation sector is really fascinating. We're able to actually quantify, as you can see in the top right hand corner, the drowsiness level of this driver. Another really great application uh, within the manufacturing sector is we can marry up the key point detection and object detection. For example, to look at this worker assembling a workpiece housing. So with key point detection on the worker itself, and then the object detection on the workpiece housing, we're able to put together various metrics such as cycle time. Now it's important to note, this is not an actual output from a model. It's merely a mock-up uh, due to IP concerns. Another really great application for both the sports world and the medicine world is ball tracking and actual tracking within the athlete itself. So you can look for inefficiencies in movements that might lead to injuries, or you can also just track the ball itself, potentially for um, video concerns or something like that. Now let's move to the next one here, which is my personal favorite. So this is an incredible video watching a skier actually move down the mountain. We can see the key point skeleton applied and we're tracking them as they move down this mountain. So personally, this is mesmerizing. For me, it's an incredible application of our technology here. So thank you all very much. Uh, that is my presentation at this time. Please join us next week live at roboflow.com webinar. And thank you all very much.